see here is made up of 12 12 inch square blocks and this is actually the quilt that we created in my first ever video quilt along. If you want to get more information or if you want to learn how to make each one of these 12 different blocks you see here, go ahead and click right here and I'll send you directly to the playlist so you can see all the videos in the entire video quilt along series. For now this is the quilt that we're going to be loading onto my long arm frame and quilting so let's get started. So I'm at my long arm machine and I'm getting ready to load the backing onto the rollers, but I did want to point out something. When I got the machine, it came with these zippered leaders or aprons, and basically the loading method for this is, you see the center mark here, you would fold up your backing fabric and line up the center marks, and you basically sew one edge of your backing fabric to one edge of the zipper tape. So you would take this off, go to your sewing machine, and then once it's sewn on with a basting, you know, a long straight stitch, then you would come and zip it back on and everything would be nice and even. Well, that got to be really cumbersome, especially with larger quilts, sewing and pushing that fabric through, that a few years ago I was so happy to come across an email in an online group that I'm a member of where somebody suggested that we load our backing fabric with these magnets. These are electrical conduit poles and you can see here the magnets stick perfectly to them. And so, you know, you have to have a certain size magnet so that it'll hold up and then you basically just give yourself a few extra inches of the backing fabric. So normally you would maybe cut the backing fabric three to four inches extra. I like to give myself when I'm using this magnet method about six to eight inches just to make sure that the fabric is wrapping around uh, the rollers enough, okay? So let me show you how I do this. And before you ask, I don't remove the zippered leaders from here because this would have left my poles too gummy and I probably would have had to get new poles and I just didn't feel like dealing with it. And actually for a few years I've been using it just like this and I can put the magnets through all the bulk of the fabric and it works just fine, so I'll show you. Now because my quilt top measures 45 and a half inches on one side, I had to piece my backing because 44 or 45 inch width was not enough to give me the extra that I needed for backing fabric piece. So I pieced my backing. I have some white fabric here and this pale blue as well. Generally, when you load the backing fabric onto your quilting frame, you want to have whatever seam you use to piece your fabric going horizontally. So my backing is squared, you know, I've measured it to size, I've measured extra, just to be sure. I'm folding up the two points here so that I can find my center point. Okay, so here's my center mark. Crease it with my fingers. And make sure that you're loading your backing with the pretty side facing out because that's going to be the back side of the quilt. So whatever you pieced it, that seam should be towards the inside. So I'm going to take my crease here. And notice since I still have the zippered leaders on, here I'll show you what I do. My little center crease mark, I'm going to go behind this here. And I'm lining up my crease mark with the center mark that I already have on my previous zippered roller. And when I line up the mark there on the center, I'm just going to place a magnet right on it. Now, trying not to move this, because obviously with magnets you can slide around pretty easily, we want that center mark right where that magnet is. Then I'll fix the rest of my fabric and come around here and continue to do the same thing. I'm just going to stretch it out and place some more magnets. If you want to know the type of magnets that I have here, I'll include a link in the video description box below. And then we're going to come, remember, center to one side and then from the center again to another side. You just try to keep it as straight as you can. And you can see this is a lot, takes a lot less time than pinning or anything. You can see here the entire length across the back is put on with the magnet and it's all right in place the whole way over, okay? Now I come over to this side, I loosen up my roller, and now I'm gonna start rolling this up. Baby woke up, so I had to bring it with me. So, I'm gonna continue rolling this up, making sure it's nice and even on both ends, okay? And just give your fabric a little shake, try not to pull it too hard. And I'm just gonna roll up this back roller as even as I can get it. And if it takes a few trips walking back and forth, that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. I generally will try to smooth out from the center to the outside so that I don't have any little puckering or anything going towards the center. You wanna flatten everything out, center to the outside edges. 
okay? And generally you'll see that once you start getting an even distribution of the fabric, everything's nice and smooth, I generally can stay on one side of the machine and continue rolling everything nice and evenly. Now we're getting to the center seam here of where we pieced our backing fabric, right? And if you want to, like I said earlier, you can press it open, you can steam it. I really don't go through the mission because it's going to be such a hassle for me. By the time I end up working the fabric onto the rollers, I'll probably crinkle it up and mess it up again. So what I do is I just let the seam go in the direction that is being rolled. So as I continue to roll this way, the roller itself, along with the rest of the fabric that's cushioning it in place, is going to be pushing it in one direction. Whatever that direction is, I go with it. Now, when we first started loading up our backing at the top, remember we folded the fabric in half and creased it and lined that up with the center mark. I forgot to mention you need to do that at the bottom as well. So I have my little notch here that I'm going to match up with this one here. Because I have these zippered leaders here, I'm just going to continue folding this up until I can see, move my magnets out of the way. So I can see my center mark where I'm lining up with the crease that I made in my fabric. And then what I want to do is just put it over it and get a magnet and put it right there, okay? So I'm finishing rolling the zippered leader all the way over, okay? And then I'm coming over the, this way forward over the leader with the actual backing fabric. And so I'll continue to do that. This Remember, from the center to one direction, from the center to the other. Gather up my magnet here. And I'm just smoothing out the zipper leader underneath so I, nothing is bulking up for me. If it moves, remember. And if the crease is not enough for you, go ahead and mark it with a fabric marker or a safety pin or something so you can find your mark. And that way you can correct it in case it moves on you. But it's real simple. So I'm just going to put more magnets all the way this way and then from the center out that way as well. And one more thing that I don't want to forget to mention is that I try to line up the edge of the fabric the entire way, right, down the center of this pole. And then we're also placing the magnets about every five to six inches apart. Now that this edge is done, I'm going to roll it up by going this one forward this way and smoothing out as I go. And then continue to roll up. I don't want to give too much slack because I want everything to stay nice and taut like this and just continue to roll the entire way. Now keep an eye out for the top part of your fabric because you don't want to continue rolling the entire way. What's going to happen is you're going to tug away the fabric and it's going to slip out from underneath the magnets. So we want to go until we can still see one roll, at least one to two rolls of the fabric on this back roller. You see the magnets are starting to creep out right here. This you could probably get away with this, okay? But you can see how much I have. I only have about a half of an inch of fabric underneath the magnets. And if I pull this, it's going to just, the fabric is just going to slip right out. So I'm going to re-roll this, and I want to have at least that one full roll so that I can make sure that the magnets are holding my fabric in place. Now you can see, I pretty much have everything nice and even across the board. And this is kind of how I like my backing. It's not super, super taut but it's not droopy, okay? Well now when it comes to my batting, I'm just going to drape a piece of batting over here. And you can see that the batting is not going to be rolled onto the roller or anything like that. And that's why we account for that extra backing fabric because we need fabric that's going to reach all the way around this roller to be held down in place by our magnets. And then even then, my machine is not going to start stitching all the way back here. So I'm going to float my batting a little bit further, about an inch and a half or so away from that bottom edge. And now the fun begins. We bring our quilt top. When I'm laying my quilt top, okay, I'm going to float it. That's what it's called. We're floating it on top of the batting and the backing fabric. So I want to layer it so that I have extra batting and extra backing left, okay? So in this case, I know it's not going to move on me there. And even if it does, I have extra coverage. Slide it, remember, from the center to the outsides. 